Hello, today I'm going to uh, demonstrate to you how to assemble our brand new kit for the IGUS slider. This kit, uh, as you can see, comes with a number of different parts, but it's designed specifically for the IGUS 1080B slider. There's a 1080A as well, but the B actually has a 1032, excuse me, 1024 tapped holes in the end, which I'll explain uh, the reason why later. But actually, uh, the IGUS slider comes in various lengths. This uh, version is for the one meter uh, unit. Now obviously you can use this kit with uh, any particular length that you order. Um, all you'd have to do is uh, order a little bit longer belt. So, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing you want to do here is you can grab your uh, two 3.75 inch uh, channel pieces and these actually little 585470 mounts. And we're going to go ahead and bolt two of them on one of the little pieces of channel here. Utilizing our, as you can see here, kit comes with a numerous selection of screws but we're going to use our 632 by quarter inch socket head cap screws here. Bolt both of them in here. And we're going to go ahead and tighten these down. Double check this other side. And there we go. Next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, bolt our motor into the motor mount. Set that off to the side. Now obviously this kit can, boy you can use it with just about any kind of motor depending on, we have lots of, the Activotics line offers lots of different uh, motors to attach, or excuse me, motor mounts to attach your type, any type of motor to channel or any given Activotic part. Um, but basically what we've, uh, what we've got here is one of our 12 volt precision gear motors. Um, we're going to go ahead and use this. I think this is a 60 RPM. 60 RPM is a pretty good motor to start with with the IGUS slider just because it offers a good range of, of speed, relatively you know, slow, but also uh, can give you some uh, decent speed depending on the type of shot you're wanting to do with your slider. So we're going to go ahead and utilize this motor here. I'm going to go grab the motor mount here. And you might have to rotate this thing around to be able to index the correct holes to make sure that your output shaft is directly in the middle of of the motor mount itself. So I found them here. These are Phillips screwdriver and these actually screws are a little uh, three mil screws. So go ahead and tighten these down here. Tighten those down. Just like so. Next what we want to do is we want to go ahead and grab one of our um, hub deals here and our flat bracket which you'll find in the kit as well. Once again we grab, grab our 632 socket head cap screws, quarter inch length. I'm going to go ahead and put four of these in. Keep them loose at first. We'll go back through and tighten them up here in just a second. Now we got all four of them in. Go ahead and tighten them up. And there we go. Next what we're going to do is going to go ahead and bolt this. Um, as you can see here, I'll show it to you a little closer so that we can kind of see how the screws are in. I'm going to go ahead and bolt this directly to our mount. But first, we actually want to put on our adapter here. Excuse me. It's our little uh, shaft coupler. I'm going to go ahead and put this on. Slide that all the way down. There we go. Up just a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten that on. There we go. And now we're going to go back and put this plate on that we, this little pre assembly we did. Bolt that directly to the motor mount. Once again, you'll find out that most of the whole, well, the whole Actobotics line basically uses 632 screws. So comes in really nice when you're building lots of different projects. You only have to have one type of screw, so in various lengths, of course. Go ahead and tighten this up, all four of them. And now we have our motor assembly. Of course, the Igus slider, this kit can actually work with stepper motors, brushless motors, any kind of motor, RC car motor. Of course, it'd be extremely fast, but 
Um, but it works, like I said, it works great with even stepper motors. All you have to do is uh, utilize one of our new stepper motor uh, uh, um, mounts that's going to be coming out very soon for all the way down from NEMA 8 to uh, NEMA 23. So anyway, so now we can set this off to the side. We've got a coupler on, bolted to our precision gear motor, um, ready to go. So, and step two will be here in just a second. Okay, now that you actually have the gear motor bolted to our little assembly here. Um, we're going to go ahead and bolt it to our little 3.75 inch uh, channel piece here and this is of course going to be the drive end of our, of our slider mechanism. So we're going to go ahead and uh, turn it this direction just like this and you can align this, actually this is going to go directly in the middle, so the middle hole and you can align it any, any particular direction you want to. Obviously you can see here the gear motor is offset on the mount and so whichever way, you know, it really doesn't matter, whichever way you want to mount it is perfectly fine. So, but we're going to go ahead and to put, uh, of course we're going to grab four more of our 632 um, screws here and feed them through. Now we're not going to tighten these all the way up quite yet um, just so we can align the shaft so we get it in. So we're going to put that one in. I'll put in number two, number three, like so, and number four, last one here. You have to have a little bit of patience doing it because you've got to slip the tool through the opposing holes. So just, just bear with us here. It's, it's, it, once you get, get it down, it's pretty easy. So as you can see here, you can still wiggle it around a little bit. We haven't put the, tightened the four holes yet, or excuse me, screws down yet. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the opposing ball bearing in. This is our six, excuse me, our quarter inch bore uh, flange ball bearing. And now we're going to go ahead and take our quarter inch shaft, slide it all the way through, and into the shaft coupler. And you may have to loosen up the little set screw into the shaft coupler. So as long as it snaps in, just like that. Now, of course, the kit comes with two shafts. You want to use the longer uh, of the two in this, in this uh, assembly here. So now, now that that bell bearing has aligned everything, now we can go back through and tighten up these four holes, or excuse me, screws. Like so. so you get all four of them nice and tight. It's a little difficult once the, once the uh, pulley goes on. Now we're going to go ahead and pull this shaft back out. Like so. Once the ball bearing comes out, we're going to put that back in in just a bit. So now what we want to do is obviously this kit comes with two 16 tooth pulleys. We're going to go ahead and hold the pulley in just like this. Make sure that the set screw is actually pointing toward you so we can align it with the flat. Push it all the way through just like so. And now what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and tighten up the set screw on the shaft coupler. Make sure your shaft is all the way in. Push in there pretty hard. Tighten it down. We're going to go ahead and leave this loose at this time right now. Next we're going to go ahead and grab our ball bearing once again. Put that back in. The yeah, end, it'll snap right in. Now we're going to grab these, one of these little uh, black uh, spacers. These are 16th inch thick spacers and what that allows it to do is allows it, well it actually helps uh, where the um, collar, the set screw collar does not ride on the race of the ball bearing. This little black piece right here will ride on the inside race. Just keeps everything running nice and smooth. Next we're going to go ahead and put our collar on and line that up with the flat in the shaft and we're going to go ahead and tighten that down. So this is exactly what you should have so far. This is going to go ahead and stay loose. We're going to have our flat still facing outward so we can, so we can set, or excuse me, uh, reach our set screws easily. So that is your drive assembly and next we'll actually be putting it together with one of the uh, ABS plates. So Now we're ready to actually mount our drive system to one of the two ABS plates. Both of these ABS plates are the identical shape, they're just mirrored images of one another. One has, both of them actually have a, has a smooth uh, side and the other has a hair cell finished side. Just, uh, to help align everything up. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab one of the plates, it doesn't matter which one, and we're going to go ahead and bolt it to our drive assembly. What you want to do is, you can see here, obviously as I said before, is you've got a smooth surface and you've got a little bit of a rough hair cell surface. We're going to put the rough hair cell surface towards the outside or actually bolt that side to our drive mechanism like so. And you can see here there are four countersunk screw holes right here. We're going to grab these 632 
3 8 countersunk screws and put them in just like so. I'm not going to tighten the first one up at all just so we can get everything aligned. Of course those are screwing right into our little 585470 5, mounts. And once we get all four screws in then we can go ahead and tighten everything nice and tight. So this last screw we can go ahead and put that in nice and tight. Cross over. Tighten the opposite side. There we go. There we go. So that is the assembly you should have there. And next we're going to go ahead and put the opposite end, which is the belt tensioner end, together in the next segment. Now we're going to assemble the belt tensioner uh, end, which is obviously the opposite end of the drive system. So we're going to do something that we did in the very first uh, segment here is we're going to go ahead and put the, take the other piece of channel and put in the little 585 470s, just like so. Once again, we're going to have four screws total, 632 by quarter inch socket head cap screws. Tighten these up. Those in and push that down. We can go ahead and tighten these like that. Grab the other one here. This is the last one that we'll be using. Finger tighten those in. And come back with the tool. And tighten these up. Just like so. Just like that. Next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the ABS plate to it. Once again here we're always going to attach to the hair cell side. You can see here just like I mentioned before there's two surfaces. We're going to go ahead and bolt it in just like this. So what we're going to do here, once again we should only have four of these screws left which are the 3 8 inch long 632 countersunk screws. And we're not going to tighten these up all the way yet until we get to the last one just so everything gets aligned correctly. And we're just about there. Now this last one, let's go ahead and crank down on it pretty good. Go across, crank down on that one. This one and last. Right there. So that is the assembly you should have right there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start putting the belt tensioner together. Now this part here, we utilize obviously one of our 16 tooth pulleys, utilize our quarter inch pillow blocks, our shaft here, and some screws here, and our plate here, and two other parts here, one of our carriage bolts here. So we're going to go ahead and assemble this. First thing what you want to do is you want to go ahead and put the pulley directly in or as close as you can actually get it to the center here and go ahead and tighten that set screw down and we're going to try to measure that you can see here just kind of eyeball it. there's plenty of clearance once it goes in but you just want to get it as close as possible tighten that down once again I can't stress enough that you want to tighten the set screw down on the flat of the shaft set that like that now we're going to take two of the little black bushings or excuse me spacers I should say Put two of them on either side, just like that. We're just going to try to space this from the pillow blocks just the right amount. So now it should be just like that. We have two of them here and two of them on this side. Spacing's pretty darn close, not too bad. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put, uh, excuse me, attach uh, this assembly to a pillow block. Now, what you want to do is you can see here the pillow block, the bear ball bearing is pressed in on one side, and you can see here the other side, you can see there's a little bit of a lip left. We're actually going to want these to run on the race or the face of the bearing right here. So we're going to go ahead and push this in like that, just like that. And next, we're going to want to put the other one in the opposite side, just like that. So that's what it should look like. Next, we're going to go ahead and take our carriage bolt slide it through this square part and let the squares line up just like that. Now we're going to go ahead and attach it just like so. So don't worry about that being loose, it's no problem at all. Now we're going to run our 632 by quarter inch screws 
through like this. And we can just kind of finger tighten them all in. So I don't drop any here, which I normally do. So, all right, now we're gonna go ahead and tighten these down. Now, whenever you're putting the, uh, the uh, socketed cap screws against Delrin plastic, you don't really need to tighten it down too tight. You can deform the plastic if you really crank hard on it, but plastic's very, very durable. It's just that you just don't wanna, um, you really don't need to tighten it down all that tight. All that much, I should say. So that's the assembly you've got right there. You can see that the pulley comes close to the head of the carriage bolt, but uh, has plenty of clearance. So, so that's that part. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put this assembly into the, basically the end framework. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go ahead and place it in just like this. So it's gonna slide right in there at an angle. And this system is basically gonna slide just like this. And that's how it's gonna tighten up the pulleys, or excuse me, the belt. So what we're going to do here is grab this part right here. You can see it's got a hex in it. This part's pretty useful for all different kinds of applications, but in this part, basically we're going to run the hex towards the inside of the part because we're actually going to want our little handle, our little tightener to rest on this flat right here. So I'm going to go ahead and you can see here the 632 tapped holes. I'm just going to go in just like this. Push that in so those holes line up. And now we're going to grab our last of our 632 by quarter inch length screws here. And like I said, don't, don't tighten them up all, all four of them quite yet or each individually yet until we get all of them in. Then we'll go through and actually tighten everything up nice and tight. Oops, and actually, you know what? I did exactly what I told you not to do is I put that plate in the backwards. So luckily we didn't get too far before I spotted it. So... I'm going to go ahead and pop that out and flip that around. There we go. And once again, tighten your screws here, here, swing that around. There and there. All right, now we can go ahead and tighten, crank down on all four of these. There we go. That last one in. And there you've got it. Now you can see this system will slide, actually slide back and forth. And now we're going to go ahead and put our, our little uh, thumb screw, I guess you'd say. Well, it's not really a thumb screw, but it's got a hollow, hollow center. That way it can run it all the way out. And you can see here as I'm twisting this, it's actually uh, uh, running, this, running this back towards it. So we're actually going to leave that as far out as possible, or excuse me, as close to this as possible, just so we... It's much easier to put together once you start putting the belt on. So we're going to run that out about right there. So it's still holding it, yet it's still, uh, um, we can actually uh, move it around if need be. So that's that assembly. Next, we're going to actually attach these to our slider. So that's coming up next.